another interesting of Inside Out live in Asaba Delta State. And today we have a topic that I think is important to all of us. You will know that all across the world they're talking about the food revolution, the importance of agriculture. And so um, the question then is, um, if there's going to be food shortage very soon, according to what has been said, how are we encouraging the new generation to go into farming? Is it lucrative? Is it, I mean, because everybody wants to be a banker, wants to wear tie and all that. How do we get the new generation involved in agriculture? So I've titled this topic, Farming and the Next Generation, or if you like, Farming PLC, because we have to make it PLC in order for it to become attractive to the new generation. How do we turn farming from what our fathers and our mothers used to do when they used to hoe? And um, I think they still do, though, and turn it into something corporate that would attract the younger generation. Because I think food is something that can never go out of fashion. So there must be a way. And I think on the panel, we have a, um, a set of people who will do justice to this topic. And I'm going to start my introductions um, from my, I think, left. He's from the Youth and Singles Network, Asaba. You're very welcome to Thank Inside you. Out. Next to her is the only lady on the program, somebody I have a lot of regard for. She has a group called the Quintessential Business Women's Association. This is what she eats. I mean, the reason why this topic came to my mind was because I listened to her speak. And I thought, gosh, we need to get this out to a lot more young people. If they could see and think like this, maybe things will change. I'm not sure. But I don't know whether she just has very big dreams or whether it's doable, what she's saying. You will hear by the time I'm done. Please help me welcome Shimite Katung. You're welcome to Inside Out. <laughs> and last and least, I don't know why they say last but not the least. If the last is the least, okay. Anyhow, Zach T. Oladele, he's a farmer. Am I right? A young farmer. So, first of all, maybe I should start with you, Zach. You are a farmer. They are all sure that you are a farmer. I don't know what they expect a farmer to look like, but they don't think that you look like one. <laughs> Abby, what were you expecting to see? Singlet. Singlet or Did you hear what they said? They said they expected somebody who would be wearing singlet and rapper with cutlass and <laughs> And bicycle. Yes. Uh, it's very unusual. Tell us your story. Okay. Thank you very much, ma'am. Yes, please. Uh, we we'll start with uh, saying, before I came to this program, or before I was invited for this program, uh, 11 a.m., I was working in my farm. Because of uh, the challenges I face. Please, like, no, let me just say, farm, what do you farm? Uh, fish farming ma, and poultry. OK. Uh, before I say anything right now, just, I'll just try to digress a little bit. I saw something that interested me when I was in year three in campus then. Uh, you are a the, graduate. Yeah, yes, what did you study? I studied aquaculture and fisheries. So you always wanted to be going to farming. Yes. You always wanted to be a farmer. Yes, ma'am. There must be only one of you in every one million. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you agree, eh? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> the, I thought my passion was going to read mass communications. Then. Uh, I found out that it was just wrong because I discovered then, year two in Abuja, I saw a deputy CBN governor retired. And in his house, where we were staying, he bought three up to 24 acres. The front view, he used it for his houses where he rented it out for people. And the back, he used for fish farming. Initially, I had no idea of anything. So I introduced myself, wanted to sell myself out, but he turned me out. 
okay, I say, okay, for me to be relevant and be good in it, I need to encourage the new generation that is coming in. I now have to go and stay with somebody. He wasn't paying me. I was doing the job for free. Hmm. For 11 months, I learned how to construct a pond. And <laughs> I was still attending my classes. That was while you were in school? Why I was in school. Really? I was still attending my classes. My first IT, I got my first pay in Calabar. Former NTA manager, Mrs. Gladys, Dr. Ms. Gladys Isain in Calabar. That was the first place I got my first pay, which was 10,000 naira for just a pond I construct. <laughs> for every pond I construct then it was just 10,000 naira. But it was, it was not for the money. What I want to do was to, because food, people eat fish every day. People must eat every day. And we import fish every day. I wow. just want to stand out from the rest of the people. So from there, I saw her. She retired. Then she, she, she was in Asaba. She moved down to Abuja. She was shopping Abuja and Makodi. She's retired now, but she went to the farm. So something have to trigger me. If those people spend all their years working, they now have to go back to farm. Hmm. So why if me, as a young person that is vibrant, if I start now, it will be better for me to meet up to the demand of the market. <laughs> and uh, one of my lecturers told me then, he said, no, th these days, no youth really want to go into farming because everybody just wants the big collar job, the white collar jobs, and the rest of stuff. Yeah. And believe me, some people have the white collar, yellow, blue, some have no collar. But you have to create your own collar. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, how you create the collar? I'm no loving you already. <laughs> So, but uh, if you are going into farming for the money, you'll be disappointed. You have to love what you're doing. Because what I, what I realize, I consult always, what I realize in fish farming is this. There's a time you, where you will, as you are putting in the money, you'll be losing because, not because you are not experienced, because of the weather. So if you cannot manage the weather, the temperature of everything, you will lose everything as a fish breeder. Because I breed and sell and do the rest. I also construct pond. But the one time you will get it right, it will compensate for it 10 times. Mm -hmm. When I was in campus, I said, uh, I'm going to graduate with a 2 million naira before I leave the campus. I don't want to go back to Abuja to miss my parents because they've tried a lot. I'm the firstborn of my family, and instead of going to meet my mom to give me money for haircut, I should be sending her money at home, or I should settle down on my own because I don't want to be a liability to them any longer. So I said, the two million naira, I will use it to get an apartment, take her from campus from year three. And all my stay in campus, at least I made up to let's say 500. Why? Because I was partnering with somebody then. Because now since I, I went out, I rented an apartment, I have a place that I, I used, that I breed my fish, then I do some other consultancy work outside. And thank God these days, uh, the Minister of Agri uh, recently, yes. with the transformation agenda, is really helping issue in the fishing industry, agricultural sector as a whole. All right, thank you. I will come back to you. You have a lot for us to learn. I'm learning too. Let me come to you, Loki. Um, what do you do? I work with an NGO in Asaba. With an NGO in Asaba. Um, the Youth and Singles Network Asaba. OK. Um, you're a graduate? Yes. You graduated from what? Delta State University from fisheries. From what did you study? Fisheries. Fisheries? Yes. Same thing you do. Do you have a farm? No. Why not? Uh, OK, one of the reasons why 
I, are you interested in farming? Yes, yes, I'm really interested. But one of the things that um, triggered me not to go into farming per se was uh, I, I found out that most of the times the input you put into into farming, you don't get what you what you have put into the farming back. And and another thing is um, what do you I, mean? Uh, what I mean is because there are some things that you you put into a particular um, farming, let's say, for example, fish tree, like what we have been discussing, yeah. you won't get that back in return, per se. But like feed, fish feed. Feed, Things feed, like for that. example, yes. Yeah. Yes. And another thing that also makes me not to go into farming, I, I, I find it difficult for, but I, I think it's, it's a kind of dirty job, per se, because if you want to um, correlate it with the, the white collar job that we yeah. that we say yeah. there's no way to marry the two each other because the youth of these days want to really get a, a quick a, white, a quick a money quick money let me put it that way in quotes quick okay. money so and for me a kind of a process a thing of a process that would take a particular time don't before. say the youth of today say you okay okay let me use myself an example exactly yes because we we I found out that farming is a process you know process you plant you weed you wait for cultivation harvest. But the youth of this, like I'm saying, like for myself. I know that you represent a lot of young people yes, who yes. think like we that. Yes, yes. We need quick money because there are some so challenges. Please, what do you think can give you quick money? For example, telecommunications, technology. Like technology is the order of the day for now. So I can How, go into... No. So, okay, to get a ready-made job, you mean? Yes. Just okay. like graduate and go and work in an office? In a firm, yes. Yeah, okay, let me understand. Okay, that's yes. what you mean by yes. quick yes. money. Yes, yes. Okay. So, like, like I was saying, so going there to make me like the youth I'm, I'm saying now, yes. that I'm also in the school of thought into, is that we want a source of a quick money, per se, because the challenge So, do you have quick money now? I'm still working towards it because I'm still in the firm. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm... So I'm still working in the firm. I'm still working in the firm for me to get that. But that if I if I to look at it in the farming sector, what I'm getting now is not what the farming sector will give to me concerning what I'm getting now for my present. So well, so you work. believe that you're better off doing what you're doing now than going to into farming. farming. Yes. Do you think it's a better option to work for somebody than to work for yourself? It is better for me to work for myself. That working for somebody. Yes. Because now that I'm working, now that I'm, now that I'm in the, under a firm already working for somebody, yes. is to make an ends meet so that I can be able to get some things to work, to have my own. Mm -hmm. Though I also know that farmers, they have the opportunity to have their own farm. But I'm also working to have my own firm. Not to be having, because I see farming as a kind of a dirty job, which, that, which I don't have the interest to do. Because farming, you, have, you need to have a passion for it. You need to yes. have that interest. I have and I, for person, don't have that interest. So I'm why did you person. study fisheries? I studied fisheries because that was what the university gave to me. <laughs> you, but you graduated. Yes, I graduated with 2-1. Yeah, don't, you, you know, you know, I'm, you even graduated with a 2-1. 2-1, yes. Yeah. tell you something. What, why, we, why are we doing what we're doing? The fact that you think that farming is a dirty job. Because for you to have come out with a 2-1 means that whatever you set your mind to do, you can do it. Yes. That's what that tells me. But you do not see farming as an option. Am I correct? Yes. You would rather put all that energy and brain into some other business. I'm with you. Yes. You don't think farming will give you the kind of returns? Do you, is that the opinion of a lot of young people? Yes. Okay, let's see whether we can um, educate and enlighten you a bit yeah. because of how you look at farming. Maybe we can change that point of view. Yes. We'll go on a break and we'll be right back after the break talking to me. <laughs> Welcome back. We're still talking farming and the new generation, farming PLC. And um, we, I just wanted us to get an overview from the two different young people with two different mindsets before I talk to you, um, Shimite. First of all, tell me a bit about what you do and why you decided to go into what you do. Okay. 
Uh, my name is Shimite Katung, and we run an association called um, Quintessential Business Women Association. It's made up of 928,000 members nationwide. We have a women's wing and a youth wing. 1,000 women per local government, 200 youths per local government, and we're interested in the agriculture and solid mineral value chain. I discovered that one liter of petrol is 97 naira, and one liter of orange juice is 200 naira. When I weighed that, I realized that not everybody will buy petrol, but every day you will eat at least 100 naira for a plate of food, if that's what you can afford. Some people may be fortunate to eat more than one plate of food. Now let's count 100 naira times 365 days times 170 million people, and you will know what we're making in the agri sector. <laughs> Let me make you feel sad. We're not the ones making it. We spend about 900 and uh, plus uh, billion dollars, billion naira, importing chicken. Somebody else is farming it because you won't. Day, uh, at the end of the year, we spend about 345 million importing sugar because none of you want to plant the sugar cane, so some other country is doing it. So this money I'm calling does not belong to you. It belongs to people that are smarter than you who know that people must eat. When you see the ages of those who are making this money, they're about your age because they are smarter than you. Now, let me break it down for you. In the agri value chain, you can be anything you want to be. And I'm going to illustrate for the purpose. This is um, herbal wash. This was designed by somebody who is 25 years old. You take moringa, you mix it in like a soap, and you package it well. These are Nigerians, in case you think they're from somewhere else. This is snail extract. You know when you eat the snail, you know that slime you throw away? Some people in France know that that's what they use for a face mask. We own the snail, but we don't make the mask. We can eat the snail, use the slime to make the mask, and use the snail shell. That's what they used to do the foot scrub for rough skin. These are white collar jobs. It includes chemistry, branding, name it. Even we had this connection with Silicon Valley. And what do they want to do? They want to find out what the problems are in the agri and solid mineral sector. And they are looking to look, create apps that can be used to solve problems like data analysis, data collection for agri. One of the reasons people can't invest here is because we don't know how many groundnuts we're harvesting. Because if you leave this village women to start to count how many bags of 50 kg, it won't work. So if you keep sitting down there saying there is no job, I'm sorry for you because there will never be a job for you. But for those of us who are smart. <laughs> and do I look poor to you? No. I have not had to touch the soil because I'm in another part of the agri value chain. If you don't go away with anything, go away with the fact that every product you use has a component of agriculture in it, from soap to whatever you may have it. We have people that buy bleaching cream, but we have organic bleaching cream. It's called Kamud. It's used in the fattening room in Calabar. You rub it on your body, you take a bath, and you're two shades lighter without any side effect. Why can't we bottle it and ship it? We have in the north what they call Maikade. It's an oil gotten from animal fat. If your skin is cracked and you rub it on and you, you have all of this ache, it soothes you within an hour. Why can't we bottle it and move it? We have shea butter. South Africa is supplying shea butter to Body Shop. That is one of the main ingredients in uh, Body Shop. But South Africa does not have shea nuts. Do you know who has shea nuts? Very good. How, how, how much longer will you continue in foolishness? Everything you have said is the result of one part in the Bible where they say, my people die for lack of If you want to remain where you are, this is OK. But I can assure you, whether you do it or not, they said if you will not do it, they will raise stones to do it. May you never be that matric number that graduated from your school. May you be somebody that can fill a vacuum in your own land. Anybody in this Nigeria, if you are not a farmer or a miner, you are wasting your time because that is what God has given us. That's why we don't have hurricanes, we don't have tsunami, we don't have earthquakes, we don't have anything. We have 12 months of sunshine, yet you couldn't figure it out. 
what you are made to do, 65, 64% of the raw materials in the whole world that will service the world is in Africa. Most of it is in Nigeria. When you from a less developed country travels abroad, you are called an immigrant. When they come here, they are called expatriates. Do you know why? Is the motive. You are going there for the work somebody else did. They are coming here to improve something. Anybody who is coming to improve is always called an expatriate. When we went, we were called expatriates because we were experts. When you go, you are going, some of you, to seek asylum, a bloody immigrant. There is no room for you. Now, if the resource is here, <laughs> hang on, don't clap, don't clap. If the resource is here, and there's an exodus to where the resource is. Give these raw materials into the hands of a European and they will tell you that when you're negotiating, if you have raw materials, you won't bring money. We have human capital. We have raw materials. The person coming to the negotiation table should bring technical expertise and finance because what we have, money cannot buy it. It's just because it's in the hands of people that don't want to think. You are no longer permitted not to think. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, um, you, know, you know what I said? You know, I heard her speak, and I thought there's a need for us to... Nobody... The biggest fool is the fool that fools himself. Because other people can choose to fool you, but if you choose to fool yourself, there's no remedy. And before she talked, to be very honest with you, I had never known about an agreek value chain. For me, farming was about the person who is... Like you said, the singlet and the wrapper and the hoe. That was my impression of farming. But I, I, want, to, I want to say something. In order for this to work, before yes. we go on, because I, I let you do that intro, there's still, you still need the people who will do what he's doing. And people like um, Lucky will not want to go into that aspect. There are a lot of um, farmers right now who cannot even find a market for their approaches. There's a lot of food wasting in this country as we speak, especially in rural areas. Now, my question is, what is the encouragement? People have stopped using hoe and cutlass in most places in the world. How do you, even his fish farming that he's doing, he still has bad seasons. Are you insured? Huh? Are you insured? No, if you sure. have something no, wrong? No. How, how do you because for any job that you're going to, there must be some kind of security. He was saying that the effort you put into it is not what you get out of it. And that is still how it is seen. That is, uh, yeah, let me answer that. It's very simple. If you bother to watch um, SABC Africa, C-SPAN Africa, NTA, or AIT, you will hear what they call news. But if your channel is always Africa Magic, not with all due respect to Africa Magic, you will see entertainment. For you to move ahead, you need to listen to what they call news. If they raise a newspaper to you and you get irritated, but they show you a fashion magazine and you're buying it, I'm sorry, what you're looking for is not there. It will show you how to spend money. It will not show you how to make money. Now, let me answer that. That's where they hid all this information you don't know. So I'm, it's not like I'm a rocket scientist. Federal government gives seeds to people who want to farm. They do? Yes. They give. Oh, and you, you say know they that. sell. Yes. They give. They give fertilizer to who agrees to register on the database. And the database, they've done it in every language. But if you are not watching the right channel, guess what? You won't see it. If you are not listening to Radio Nigeria, where it's, these are government-owned uh, uh, media outfits, it's cheaper for them, you won't hear it. They give all the um, agric extension services free. They have land in every local government dedicated to farming. If you go to the local government and you prove to be serious, they will give you free. If you don't take the one from local government, state has their own. They will give you free. In case you don't want state and federal government, they will give you free. But in case you don't have any of those ones and you say you are from one village in Delta or wherever state you are from, there is family land. It still goes free. In case you are not sure, when you drive along the expressway and you see nothing happening somewhere and you ask the villagers you want to farm, they will still give you free. <laughs> Let's start with that because laziness will not are be you an sure? Are you sure that land is that free? Ma, let me, For let farming, me, let me, let me there add is... To that. 
the, the <laughs> portion I'm using right now, I paid for the the house the house rent for my bees. I paid, but the land is free. Oh, you got land free? Yeah. It, it, yes, it, it is free. But let me continue to tell you all the other things that are free. In case you choose not to reason, the agric extension workers will reason for you free. Just in case you don't even want to reason. There are some people sitting down every day with not many people coming. And they are accessible? They are in every local government. They are called agric extension workers. To let, me, let me confirm that. Do you, are there people? They are accessible, but they, they have some challenges. Okay. Some then you must because report I, those challenges. I'm in the field, so I know what goes on in the agricultural sectors. Some of these, uh, some of these fertilizers and the rest. I remember the last flooding that happened. Everybody did not get the seeds. I there, there's, there's, there was a form that was given to me by uh, by a, a woman, a minister of agric. Those, 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 those loans, they allocate, those seeds, fertilizers, they allocate. Most of the times, the season, farming season would have passed. Bringing fertilizer December, does it really make any use? No. But for me, I choose to succeed. It's either I succeed or I succeed. That's a good one. So is it that there's no, there's no there's option no two? Option. And there's no plan B? There's no plan B. Success and nothing else? Nothing else. So I see opportunity where I go. Even if the, the government is not there to render that services for me, I go look for it, pay for the services myself, start wherever I want to start from. But I had a goal. So do, you, do you think, let me, let me I mean, having listened to um, Shimte, and do you think that there's an opportunity for young people and they're not taking it? Very, very much. Very, Are you agreeing very, with what very, she's very, saying? I'm agreeing to what she's saying. But if you, if, when, I, when I say the challenges, it doesn't mean you're not going to get it. But well, it's going to take you some process. It's the only field where you get anything. And it's the only job you're allowed to do other than the job you're doing. The constitution of Nigeria cannot prohibit you from being a farmer, even if you're a civil servant. It is the only job nobody can touch. Ma, mm. that's, that's no doubt about that. I have no doubt about that. But who are the people assessing this? They will tell you you have to register with this. When you registered with this, they say you re register with this. Tell so, me some of the challenges you face. More challenges that I face also. The last flooding, when they brought, they brought down the seeds, for people to, to take in. Everybody did not get a seed. The government did not do anything. But you will watch on TV that millions of seeds were given out. Did, did people, know? did anybody get the seeds? Some dealt. They got the seed. Some did not get it. I'm not saying the policy is not right. It is good and it's efficient. They are working, they are trying their best. But there are corrupt people in the business because I, in, I am in the field. Okay. The same seed that was supposed to be given to farmers, the same people hijack it, own very, own very big farms in this country. They store it. In so the they house. don't let it get to the people who it should get, get to. to the people. For feed, they're using fish feed. I remember they brought down some feed fish field that was to be used for farmers. And they now called, and they caught somebody that was selling feed. The person was buying a rate of 2,000 naira and selling it for us at the rate of 5,000 naira. So, means... Meanwhile, it was supposed to be free? Free for the farmers. Okay, because you brought, okay, let's say 10 bags of uh, feed in a helos. Does that mean... It, it, it goes round. No. But after, after getting this, you have to believe the story because media is even, even making things worse these days. You believe the story or you desire you take it or you leave it. Mm -hmm. They have done theirs. Yours is to do yours. Mm -hmm. So for me, I just succeed or you succeed. Mm -hmm. That's just it. Okay, because question. 
Is that when when they bring? I mean, which means government essentially has good intentions. Very good. Intentions. And they they plan to encourage a lot of young people in. Now, one of the things I find, as with any other profession, which is why I was talking to Lucky and asking whether what where he is now is much easier, because even the telecoms we're talking about, they also face their challenges, and we know how many of us have phones, and the number they said the greatest number of people who have phones are Nigerians. Every Nigerian, no matter how poor, has two networks, because. You will get somewhere one will not work at all. So there's still that challenge, meaning it's across board. Now, my question is, have you taken it upon yourselves to constitute a force you, um, to, to say, I know government has good intentions, but it's been hijacked, and we are going to stop this? We have a, I, I have a professional body that I, that I joined, Fisheries Association of Nigeria. Yes. Uh, our president is fighting that cause. He's taking that responsibility on himself. Why is it just your president? Uh, I would say Aren't you a big enough pressure group? Uh, for me, I'm under that association. A one-man body cannot, because I, 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 I might feel it's is, is affecting me. It might not be affecting the next person. So if you say, okay, let's go together, you, you might be... You, you might be doing something wrong. But isn't that, isn't, that, isn't that the problem we face as young people in Nigeria? One uh, of the things I always say um, is that if we're a country of 150 plus million people, which I always call food for thought, as they have told us, and the people in positions of power are not up to one million, and we are complaining about them, who is mad? We. Oui. Exactly. It's because you are more than whosoever it is that is trying to hijack. The question is, are you united? Because it's only when you are united that you can fight a cause. It doesn't matter how many thousand seedlings or feedlings or whatever government brings. If a few people can hijack it and nothing happens, they will continue to hijack it. If presidency remains in the hands of a small group, their children will continue to be presidents while the rest of us will be looking at them. Ma, for the fact as that, long as you allow it. For the fact that you, are, you wear the same uniform does not mean you are united. So you, we're saying the same thing? Yes. Looking and listening to what the exchange you have heard, do you think that maybe there's some things that we haven't, or your generation, your group hasn't considered? Uh, one of the things I would also like to say is, just like what my um, um, colleague have already said, is yes. this, the, not that government don't have good intentions for farming, but the issue is the grassroots. They are not really benefiting from what government is bringing across. And that's why one of the things I, I feel that even if I go into farming, I'm not going to benefit these things that government is bringing forth. Have you tried? You haven't and, even and tried. And number two, number two again. No, you said you were not passionate about yes, it. Yes, let me, let me, also, number two is. Are you looking for all the problems? <laughs> <laughs> no, number two is, I also think that the farming uh, operations, like the, the operators, what they use in farming, are so tedious and are so strenuous. Like take for example, we're m m mentioning of um, hose and um, other, there are some, Countries that go into farming, whereby they... they, they Do you think you have the power to change it and decide not to use hose? That's why I'm into technology, to be able to go into my own firm, not for farming now. I can also help, help in, the, in, that, uh, in that field, thereby saying that being, instead of using hose for them, for the farming um, job to be stressful, I can be able to develop um, um, uh, operational technology. tools. Yes. Mm -hmm. That will help them in that field because that's one of the <coughs> things I, I, I have seen that a lot of people that are going to farm me are, are going to the, the, the kind of tedious and strenuous job for me. So, what I'm saying is, I'm going to the technology um, field so that I can be able to develop some operational tools for them. Don't to you work. need money to develop what you are developing? Yes, I need, I, I need money to do that. How are you going to get it? If farming is that hard, how are you going to get the one for technology? Technology one is a, is a is a is a field that is a sector that is coming up and has has really taken hold of the world. What you have just described to me will take a longer time to get. Are you agreeing with me? Yes. Than the farming that we are talking about. So what you have just demonstrated is this is what you are passionate about. 
this you would do even if nobody was paying you. Mm -hmm. You like it. And I think that is the major difference. Are you agreeing with me? Yes. yes. Okay. We have 1,000 women in our group working in each local government and 200 youths. There is a reason for those 200 youths. You see the hole, they don't have to use it. They, they, um, they, they have situations where government comes to clear the, the land for them. If they can ag agree to cluster their farms within an area, instead of having little, little farms, they can come together. This is available now? It's available now. But it's in, you have to sign up a document, read up a document. So you can't stress this rural women and the older men to go and do all the reading. I need the young people to help, to help them read. They will get paid for this, and then they can do the application for a cluster of people so that they can have that done. Now, I'll, I'll move on to why the, where the youths come in. Every year, you do this fish, there is nowhere to sell it. Yet, you go to a restaurant and say, you get fish. They'll say, now only meat day, now only chicken day. They don't bring fish today. Who is they? There are many young people around who have not gone from hotel to prison to hospital to do supplies. Have you never gone to a, a, a restaurant and then you just you go are shaking, eat, you are nodding your head. Meat. And then there's no goat meat that day. And the person, because maybe they've lost some staff, they're not bringing meat because they're relying on somebody to bring it. But can't that be a business where you do supplies? The person who needs meat, needs tomatoes, onions, you are a big time supplier of a daily need that you get into a restaurant and it's not there because somebody didn't supply, yet next door is a, an unemployed person who does not know how much you make for home delivery of some of those things, restaurant delivery and the rest of it. That is some of the things we want to teach the youths in the agricultural value chain. That is not the only thing youths can do. There is something called negotiation. Just because somebody is a commissioner of a Greek does not mean he has the skill of negotiation. Negotiation is the ability to price for the best deal. Some of you know how to price for the best deal, especially the ladies. And the poorer you are, the better your pricing power. So somebody needs your, 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 it's just that you don't know all the jobs in this value chain. We are pricing ourselves badly. Our cocoa is crap, even when we're exporting so many things. We need people to master the art of negotiation. We do this well in Nigeria because we are in a haggling situation. We grow up from Tejo Show Market, how much last, any market. We already know it. We don't need too much Harvard to learn it. Abroad, you go into a supermarket and the price is the price. So they don't know how to haggle. That's why they opened the School of Negotiation. We have had the School of Negotiation since we were small. Have you ever tried to do it for, 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 for a fee? Nobody has ever done It's a big you business that day. Nigeria doesn't do. In fact, the bigger the Nigerian organization that needs negotiation, the more they look for Harvard graduates who learned it for four years, when we have people that have 26 years. Well, let me, let me just, let me add, let me add yeah. to that. Let me add to that. Uh, there was uh, one of my friends. He doesn't have the market, but I had the market hmm. for it. He called me. He, I, uh, he, he read a fish for, for two weeks, and it's, it was ready to sell. I asked somebody that I want to buy. She, he sold it for 10 Naira, and I sold it for 12 Naira to the person. The person that was selling it to the other person sold it for 20 Naira. Wow, so he even made so, more profit. During the line, the line of, let's say, when I mean, uh, that's the market linkage. The market linkage. Every person was making profit from that magic. <laughs> For me, I I um, I'm involved in the. Are you food. also involved in the selling part of your fishing business? If you have the fish and you don't have market, I will market it for you. I don't need. To, I don't. I, I won't carry it. I call people to buy it. I get my fee and I go. That's just it. Because they don't have the contacts. I've been in the business for a long time. A long time. I had the contact. So if let me ask you a question. So if today you stop um, rearing fish on your own, can you still make money from the fish business? Just a call. <laughs> One call can earn me what I want.
So, for you, you, you are just, just call me. Oh, uh, Zach, I, I have some fish to sell. Can you sell it for me? I will say, okay. I will not go for the profit first. How much are you selling? How much are you selling? Okay, I will now say, okay, since you are selling for this amount, I will now tell the person, you are selling for 10 Naira, I sell it for 16 Naira. So I make my profit, you make your profit. And you have actually goes, made 6 Naira profit on every single one you sell. That, that, just without like, doing anything. Without doing anything. You need, you so need. So all you, all you have right now is your negotiation power. My negotiation power. And that's what end you Linkage money. and negotiation. Linkage and negotiation. If, if you have, a, if you, have, you want to buy a pump. Because, because we have the truth of the matter is this seems to be very important because we have a lot of rural women who don't even know how to sell and where to and sell. And they don't want to bother with that. They want somebody to come and pick it up from them, sell it, give them what they need. And then that's it. If you have the product, the person that is willing to buy will surely locate you. Where, 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 where I'm staying, where I'm staying, where my farm is located, rainy season, you can't access that place easily. But I don't bother. They will find you. Zach, maybe on WhatsApp or on social uh, network, do you have fish? My is to say yes. How come. much is it? Okay, now we have scarcity of fish everywhere from November last year. Really? And it's going to continue like this till... That means business must be good for you right now. We just need to increase the price. <laughs> <laughs> See, others don't want to do it. I'm, I'm very pleased. I wanted um, Shimita to show us some of the products that they have managed to get some kind of and this was this was designed by young people yes yes they did the branding and designing the packages day. packaging and this thing can we just go through some of them before we take audience comments? okay What's that? um each state picks a product this was picked by quara their honey is darker in the north this is abia the honey is a little bit lighter because of the pollen from the bees this is a dusted the pick pineapple, so our value add will so, be. So wait, wait, that, so that's pineapple now. Pineapple, like pineapple wine. Juice? This is what we. It's a wine. Wine. Juice is like over flooded, so we're switching it up. This is for Delta State, the pepper soup spice. One will end up being ginger for Kaduna State. One will end up being Kanya Yaji, the suya spice for Katsina State. This is palm oil. It will, this is for Akwai Bom. It's also going to be vegetable oil in the middle belt. We'll also use the same pack for soy oil for Taraba State. And this you get from rural farmers right now. Yes. Well, this is where the young people come in. <laughs> so this is Kebi State. They chose dairy products. Dairy will be fish, uh, ch uh, cheese, milk, and um, yogurt. This is going to be for Badagri, coconut butter spread. This is our, our most special product because any product we do, we Google to see who else is doing it. Nobody has ever done this anywhere in the world. I located it when I was doing African pots. They just do the, uh, the, the, the coconut, turn it into butter, and put it on their bread, because they don't have money to buy butter. But it, it tastes really good. This is the baker's wheat. We consume a lot of bread, but we don't make, do a lot of wheat. We import wheat. This is Zobo. All of these. Oh, are that's Zobo. Yeah, that's the one yes, I remember. The, the Zobo drink. Yeah, so <laughs> we want to have it done properly. This is yogurt as well. This is still from Kebi. This is for River State. This is palm wine in a bottle. We're choosing to bottle in this way. And we call it Tombo Twist in honor of Tombo Liquor. Tombo Twist. This is for Kano. This would be tomato sauce. This is for the whole country because everybody has water of body for smoked fish. After you've done the fish, we want to add value. We use the clean so it doesn't have sand or maggots. This is for Delta State. This is plantain. This already has picked an interest of an investor, so you'll be seeing it soon. This is River State. This is the long grain rice. This is for Bielsa State. We are doing three different types of snails. The small snails called escargot, the bigger ones, and then the water snails. Those are the three snails available. Frozen chicken, frozen chicken cutlets, the whole country. This is Ondo State chocolate, and we designed them using the different heads, like the Benin head, the Ife head, uh, the Confluence, just our own uh, structure. We're the owners of the cocoa. We're going to make the chocolate to taste like Kit Kat or any of the other. But How are you to... going to do that? Where are you going to do that? We're going to do it in Ondo State. 
It is our cocoa they used to make the chocolates we buy back here. We, we want to make our own. It's going to taste like their own, but we're going to make it in our own, uh, with our Designs. own molds. Mm. Then, you know, they will say dark chocolate is good for the heart. We will add Orogbo inside mm -hmm. the dark chocolate. It's not only them that have 419. We too, we have our own. <laughs> we have coconut abi. We'll throw it in. Cashew nuts and all of that. So these are some of the things uh, that young people came up with are doing as we speak. Products there, we have a mandate to design 450 products. <laughs> they don't belong to us. We are going to share to who is interested in that aspect of the value chain. It is a huge value chain. But no more will we be buying the chocolates from abroad when we have the cocoa here. I think we've done enough of that and no more. And it's the youths that can take action on that. It's not anybody else. Okay. Yeah. I've been listening to comments from the speakers and um, I just I was just trying to remember some things that have happened over the years. When I was in 200 level, you know, there was this boy, this uh, guy, he was in agri department. He's an agri faculty. I was always seeing him, you know, so, so very serious. He was always following his professor. You no know, lawyer, he was from what I would carry bucket, we'll go to the poultry farm, he would do this, you know. And I was I was staying the poultry farm was in front of my room then. So I was watching him. I was watching him. He will come back, he will, they will supply feeds and everything. I called him, I said, are you a student? He said, yes. He said, why are you doing this? Don't you read your book? He said, ah, I didn't come here for BSU. Though BS is part of things I will take home. But I came here, this is what I came here to learn. Not the BSC is, it's a paper, this is what I came here to learn. So I asked him many questions and he, he, he said something that shocked me. He said, he said, it can be like Dangote in the next 20 years with just fish. I will just uh, fire one fish. I said, what? He said, how? You know, I always see it as a dirty, okay, I, okay, I give him some time. Then when I, I go back to my room, I was thinking, I was thinking, and I called him some other time. I said, okay, do you, do you know how to develop business plan? As in, you know, there's a way you can actually go about this, your passion, and to be faster than the 20 years you thought. He said, how? Now, that was, that was when I came in. I said, as a business, as a management scientist. <laughs> and I told him, you see, he had a passion. You had I had a profession. <laughs> I knew how to develop a business plan for him. Hmm. Now, I was making money from his own idea, and I developed a plan for him. And I told him, I said, instead of you going, uh, going to buy small, small, because there were many, many of them, they buy feeds. They said, okay, instead of you going individually, why not? Why not be a, be, a, be, a, be a consultant, as in be, be the one dealing with the supplier, you know, then you supply other students that are buying. And he said, that's a good idea. Well, then, okay, I, I, I made a plan for him, okay, you discuss with the suppliers, you, they were able to reproduce the price, and then, and then he started it. He was, not making, he was not making extra money just to supply other students. At this age, do I have to start school all over again? Let's assume okay, I was Okay, 35. I'm going to trend you one part of our youth group. There is a, there's a portion of our youth group, we, we trend what they call certificate. We believe in certificate more than certificate. And let me break it down for you. Certificate is what you know. Certificate is what you studied. Most Nigerians feed on their certificate and not their certificate. That is why you find somebody who studied engineering being an excellent event planner. You find somebody who studied Actually, what I want the government to do, I want the government to organize a program where they will educate the youth about agriculture, both at the federal level, state level, and the local government level. Because uh, the management science student, because I read agriculture, the management science student in my campus. Oh, you read agriculture? Yes. Oh, you are reading yeah, agriculture. agriculture? The management science student, most of the time, they even intimidate me that instead of even farming, uh, uh, reading uh, agriculture for five years, why can't I just go back home <laughs> <laughs> and start farming? So if all these, uh, even those that even have the mind of even going to the course, they might be discouraged. Just because of the way it's looked at. Yes, exactly. They so look I at it as a waste of time for you to be in school studying exactly. agriculture. For five years. Okay, <laughs> let me tell you about what you get when you study agriculture. You get the opportunity to get a lot of education and insight, which could make you a project manager. 
So with that studying, you can manage many people that don't ha didn't have that studies. Because you know there are some, there are some fertilizers, there are some insecticides that are no longer in use. There are many things that are obsolete and outdated. With that study, you can save people the time and effort of growing something that will be disbanded. One of the things they need to do is to go to the Ministry of Agriculture's website. Another thing you can do, which is what I do, I don't go into anybody's website. I go into what is trending in agri And I try to bring a technology that hasn't come and consolidate it. That is what I do. From my observation, and this comes from many years, 17 years of dealing with issues and talking to young people in Nigeria, let me say the greatest character flaw I have seen in the transition. You want people to think for you and do everything for you. It's a major character flaw. It is the reason why we are not moving forward. I blame young people for all the problems. Because what I see is that you want a shortcut, fast way, easy way, little work, fast returns. There's God did not even work that way when he was building earth. So it is not possible. The law of nature doesn't work like that. Even you asking, all the questions I've heard from several people, so how can you convince us? How can you tell? Who is going to tell you? And there's this guy called Ashish. I don't know if you people know him. He's a freaking billionaire. He's, not, he's from Rwanda. He's Indian Rwandan. He is so rich. And you know, he gave this talk I will never forget. I wished I had it on tape. And he, at the end of that talk, there was a long line of students waiting to ask him questions. And half of the questions, Nigerians, so how do you convince us that we should come back home? And how do you come, what, what should we come back to do? You know what I liked about his response? He said, please, I never ever said anybody here should come back home. Ashish needs room to make more money. He said, because everybody who is anybody knows that the only place to invest now is in Africa. Yep. And you know what? I'm entering the Nigerian market next. Because if you're not in Nigeria, you're not doing business in Africa. Definitely. I can never forget that statement. <laughs> and he told them, he said, please stay here and work your nine to five. I need you to stay here so I can make more money. I don't need the competition. But guess what? There's nothing you want to teach the people here because they taught you. I just want to take last line, something that you want people watching at home, especially young people, to take away. Let me start with you, Lucky, okay. our newest uh, convert. Yes, uh, I want to thank Inside Out. I want to thank my auntie here. She has really done a wow, a wow topic on the, the life change concerning agriculture. Though, I, I, like I said before, that the mindset and the, the interest was not, were not there. I, I'm also standing in the, in the youth forum now to let them know what it really takes, what agriculture really takes in the life, in, the, in, the, in this earth. That is a very important thing that we need to go into. So just like she has converted me now, per se, I, I also like to tell other youths to venture into agriculture because there's really life in it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let me talk to you, Zach. Yeah. The last line, a word. I want each person watching at home and all of you here to think about who you are, what you are, and how that can be used to promote agriculture because that is what we have. That is what will make us number one in the global market. I don't think there's a better way to end this recording. It has all been said. But maybe I should just add that agriculture is also a profession that can employ other professions. So it doesn't matter what you're doing. If I'm a farmer, I can give all of you work. That's the truth. Because if you're looking at it on the scale which um, Mrs. Katung just talked about it on, if you are talking about international deals and negotiations and deals with marketers and co, you must have a lawyer. You must have an accountant. You must have marketers. You must have trucks. You must have drivers. You must have transporters. What would Warehouse you have? Warehouse owners. Warehouse you must have people who warehouse, brand managers. All of you, a farmer will employ every single one of you here. 
in this room, distributors. And if we think about it like that, then we will agree with what the Minister for Agriculture has been saying, that agriculture is a business. And the new generation needs to start to look at it. These are the best times for agriculture right now. I mean, just listening to the passion of the agri minister and a lot of states, Delta State is even one of them, have been very passionate about agri. I'm sure you've benefited even in the, at the microcredit level in Delta State, they have been exceptional with agri. There's no reason for any young person today in Nigeria. I know a young lady, Mosumola Honisoku, my goodness, her farm is amazing. She even has finished products. She has been to the UN. She has addressed heads of states. She's in the constitutional, what's that conference that's going on mm, now? National. Confab. She's there just because she is a young farmer. You guys, there's no excuse. The new generation needs to take up this challenge. Until next week, when we come your way again, I want to say a very special appreciation to the Students' Union Government of Delsu, the Awai campus. Um, to all the members of the audience here and to you at home. Bye-bye. See you next week.